Part two of this webinar, Hypertension Diagnosis and Management 2021, What is the Optimal Level of Blood Pressure Control, is a project of the Utah Million Hearts Coalition, sponsored by the United States Centers for Disease Control and composed of multiple healthcare organizations throughout the state of Utah. Continuing medical education credits are available for completing this webinar. Please watch parts one to four and complete the evaluation in the description below to be eligible for these credits. The objectives of part two are to recognize the substantial benefits of hypertension control that has been demonstrated in randomized control trials, understand the current international controversy over what constitutes the optimal threshold blood pressure at which to begin antihypertensive therapy, and the optimal target blood pressure to reach with therapy, and to review the current epidemiology of hypertension in the United States. Given the very serious consequences of hypertension, there are fortunately very substantial health benefits from hypertension therapy. A 2016 meta-analysis of 35 randomized clinical trials with nearly 150,000 patients followed for a median of 3.9 years found that a 10 millimeter reduction in systolic blood pressure reduced major cardiovascular disease events by 31%, heart failure and stroke by about 40%, and coronary heart disease and total mortality by about 15%. Importantly, a new meta-analysis of four randomized trials with more than 23,000 patients found that a systolic blood pressure reduction of just 10 millimeters of mercury also reduces the risk of dementia by 12%. A similar 12% reduction in dementia with any antihypertensive therapy was noted in a prospective observational cohort of 31,000 patients followed for between 7 and 22 years including a 16% reduction in Alzheimer's dementia. The SPRINT randomized trial of 9,361 patients found that lowering systolic blood pressure from 135 millimeters of mercury to 122 millimeters of mercury over a five-year period reduced the development of mild cognitive impairment by 19%. But a very critical question is exactly how should we should define the term hypertension. A useful definition provided by the European Societies of Cardiology and Hypertension in 2018 is that hypertension is the level of blood pressure at which the benefits of treatment unequivocally outweigh the risks of treatment as documented by clinical trials. But exactly what is that level of blood pressure? both as a threshold blood pressure at which to initiate pharmacologic therapy, but also as a final target blood pressure for pharmacologic therapy. Unfortunately, in the nine new hypertension guidelines that have been published internationally from 2017 through late 2020, there are contrasting recommendations not only for the optimal threshold and target blood pressure levels for treatment, but 40% of all recommendations in these guidelines conflict to some extent. Let's review the recommended threshold and treatment blood pressure levels in these recent hypertension guidelines. But first, why do guidelines conflict so much in this era of evidence-based medicine where the recommendations are supposed to be based on a thorough review of all available evidence? Well, a recent analysis suggests that the answer is that different guidelines make, quote, diverse interpretations, extrapolations, and prioritizations of a few key studies such as the SPRINT hypertension study from 2015. Our response as clinicians should be to recognize that guideline recommendations are not biblical commandments and that we must strive to individualize clinical decisions according to each patient's unique clinical circumstances, unique personal preferences, 
and according to our available resources, as well as according to the recommendations that come from these guidelines. Well, the 2017 American College of Cardiology American Heart Association guideline, which was commissioned by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, distinguishes patients at lower versus higher cardiovascular risk with respect to what the recommended threshold and target blood pressure levels for pharmacologic therapy should be. For, quote, lower risk patients, end quote, patients whose 10-year cardiovascular risk of heart attack and stroke is less than 10% as determined with the pooled cohort equation and who are under the age 65, the threshold blood pressure to initiate drug therapy is 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury with the target blood pressure below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. In contrast, for higher risk patients with a 10-year cardiovascular risk of 10% or higher or who are age 65 or older or who have manifest cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, or diabetes mellitus, the threshold blood pressure for initiating drug treatment is instead just 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, but again with a target blood pressure below 130 over 80. The ACC AHA guideline notes that threshold and especially target blood pressure levels may be individualized from these recommendations in persons with limited lifespan and or with high comorbidity. In marked contrast, the 2017 Hypertension Guideline from the American College of Physicians and American Academy of Family Practice addresses only patients age 60 and over, citing a lack of clinical trial evidence in younger patients. For patients at, quote, lower cardiovascular risk, their threshold blood pressure for drug treatment is actually 150 over 90 millimeters of mercury, with a target simply below 150 over 90. In contrast, for, quote, higher cardiovascular risk patients, defined as those with a prior stroke or transient ischemic attack, or with manifest cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, which is defined as an estimated glomerular filtration rate below 45 mLs per minute, or with diabetes mellitus, or with metabolic syndrome, then the threshold blood pressure to initiate pharmacologic treatment is 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, with a target below 140 over 90. In contrast, the 2018 European hypertension guidelines are very prescriptive and they provide specific recommendations for multiple subgroups. Note that the threshold blood pressure to initiate drug treatment in these guidelines is always 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, except for two subgroups, 160 over 90 millimeters of mercury for all persons age 80 and over, and 130 over 90 millimeters of mercury for patients who have coronary artery disease. But similar to the 2017 ACC AHA guideline, they now target a blood pressure below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, but they specify that target should not be lower than 120 to 129 over 70 to 79 millimeters of mercury for healthy persons under age 65 and patients with comorbidities of diabetes, heart failure, prior stroke or transient ischemic attack or coronary artery disease. In contrast, for all patients age 65 and over and for patients with chronic kidney disease, their recommended target blood pressure is 130 to 139 over 70 to 79 millimeters of mercury. In the 2020 Canadian Hypertension Guidelines, for low-risk patients with no target organ damage, no other cardiovascular risk factors, and a 10-year cardiovascular risk below 10% as calculated by the Framingham Heart Score, the threshold recommended for drug treatment is 160 over 100 millimeters of mercury, but with the target blood pressure below 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury.
for moderate risk patients with no target organ damage, but with one or more additional cardiovascular risk factors, and usually a 10-year cardiovascular risk of 10 to 14 percent, the recommended threshold and target blood pressure levels are set at 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury and above, and below 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, respectively. For patients with diabetes, the threshold and target blood pressure levels are set at 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury and above, and below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, respectively. However, for high-risk patients, as defined in the SPRINT study, patients who have cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease with an EGFR of 20 to 59 mLs per minute, or a 10-year cardiovascular disease risk of 15% or higher as calculated by the Framingham Heart Score, or age 75 and over in the absence of severe comorbidity or limited lifespan, the threshold blood pressure recommended for drug treatment is 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, and the target systolic blood pressure is set below 120 millimeters of mercury. This is the lowest target blood pressure recommended in any of the current international hypertension guidelines. Note that office blood pressure measurement for these high-risk patients must be accomplished by automated office blood pressure measurement performed on patients isolated alone in the exam room to reduce white coat blood pressure elevation, as will be discussed later in this presentation. In 2020, the American Diabetes Association updated their hypertension guidelines, recommending for patients with a 10-year cardiovascular risk less than 15% as calculated by the pooled cohort equation, a threshold for treatment of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, and a target simply below 149 over 90 millimeters of mercury. But they lower target blood pressure to below 130 over 80 for patients who have a 10-year cardiovascular risk of 15% or higher. The 2020 American Association for Clinical Endocrinology guideline for persons with diabetes has even lower threshold and target blood pressure levels for persons with diabetes and they modify these recommendations for patients with, quote, lower versus, quote, higher cardiovascular risk, provided that these target blood pressure levels can be safely reached without adverse effects. They suggest less stringent blood pressure goals than these for patients who are considered to be, quote, frail. Well, what scientific evidence actually supports some of these newer recommendations for either lower threshold and or target blood pressure levels? Well, first, observational studies, as we have seen, demonstrate a progressive log-linear increase in cardiovascular risk that begins at a systolic blood pressure of just 115 millimeters of mercury or maybe even at a systolic blood pressure of just 90 millimeters of mercury, as we noted on earlier slides. With every two millimeter increment in systolic blood pressure thereafter, increasing stroke and myocardial infarction death rates by 10% and 7% respectively. A second piece of evidence, an observational systematic review of 16 studies with over 3 million participants found that a systolic blood pressure of 130 to 139 millimeters of mercury increased cardiovascular risk by 38% compared to a, quote, normal blood pressure below 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. And blood pressure at this level was responsible for 13% of all cardiovascular events. For threshold systolic blood pressure and the initiation of drug therapy, a meta-analysis of 123 randomized clinical trials with more than 600,000 patients found a progressive 13 to 37 percent reduction in major cardiovascular events for every 10 millimeter of mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure threshold, beginning from a mean baseline systolic blood pressure of 160 millimeters of mercury or higher, down to a mean baseline systolic blood pressure threshold for initiation of drug therapy 
below 130 millimeters of mercury. Several other meta-analyses have demonstrated similar results. But, in contrast, a single meta-analysis published in 2018 found that only patients with coronary heart disease whose baseline systolic blood pressure was 130 to 139 millimeters of mercury further benefited from antihypertensive therapy. And so this meta-analysis recommended a threshold systolic blood pressure for pharmacologic therapy of 140 over 90 or higher for all other patient groups. For an achieved target systolic blood pressure with drug therapy, it also appears that a lower target systolic blood pressure is better. One meta-analysis of 42 randomized trials with over 144,000 patients found that major cardiovascular disease events were progressively reduced by 17 to 45 percent as achieved target systolic blood pressure levels were progressively reduced from 145 to 149 millimeters of mercury down to an achieved target systolic blood pressure of 120 to 124 millimeters of mercury. Seven other meta-analyses of randomized trials have found similar results, although four other meta-analyses have disputed the benefits of lowering systolic blood pressure below 130 millimeters of mercury. The SPRINT randomized clinical trial, sponsored by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, randomized community-dwelling hypertension patients over age 50 without prior diabetes, stroke, or dementia to have their systolic blood pressure lowered to a target below 120 millimeters of mercury or to a target of 130 to 139 millimeters of mercury. After a mean of 3.2 years, intensive systolic blood pressure control to a mean systolic blood pressure of 122 millimeters of mercury reduced cardiovascular disease events by 34% and total mortality by 33%. Both in the subgroup age 75 and older, 2,636 patients, and in the subgroup age 80 years and older that consisted of 1,167 patients. In this study, systolic blood pressure control below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury substantially reduced cardiovascular events and mortality in community-dwelling elderly patients without either clinical dementia limited life expectancy less than two to three years, or a high burden of comorbidity. Criteria that apply to perhaps one-third of the United States population age 75 and older. Well, the projected United States outcomes by implementing the lower threshold and target blood pressure levels proposed by the 2017 ACC AHA Hypertension Guideline, that is, 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury and above as the threshold blood pressure to treat with a target blood pressure below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury include a reduction in cardiovascular events by 340,000 persons per year with a number needed to treat of 70 and a mortality reduction of 156,000 deaths per year with a number needed to treat of 129. While this more intensive blood pressure reduction would increase selected serious adverse events by 204,000 persons per year, the number needed to harm by intensive treatment would be 182. So the benefits of lower threshold and target blood pressure levels would appear to be substantially greater than the risks, at least in this analysis. So, Let's contrast the new 2017 ACC AHA classifications of blood pressure with the 2003 Joint National Committee 7 classification that most clinicians have used over the past 20 years. Both guidelines defined a, quote, normal blood pressure as below 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. But instead of JNC7's pre-hypertension classification, of 120 to 139 over 80 to 89 millimeters of mercury, the 2017 ACC AHA guideline now defines a, quote, elevated blood pressure as 120 to 129 over less than 80 millimeters of mercury, and they redefine hypertension 
as 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury and higher. With stage 1 hypertension, 130 to 139 over 80 to 89 millimeters of mercury, and stage 2 hypertension as 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury or higher. Very, very different from the 2003 JNC7 guideline. Certainly, this variation in thresholds and target blood pressure levels recommended by the different guidelines can create mass confusion for clinicians. However, the shared concept among all of the guidelines is to use personalized thresholds and especially target blood pressure levels for individual patients. Lower target blood pressure levels below 120 to 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury may be very appropriate for younger patients with longer life expectancy and for patients with high cardiovascular risk or existing cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, and or diabetes as long as it is patient preference to attain these lower blood pressure levels and as long as therapy is tolerated. In contrast, a higher target blood pressure may be preferable for patients with limited life expectancy, severe cognitive impairment, postural hypotension or high fall risk, polypharmacy, poor self-care capacity, not adherence to medications, or if it is patient preference or if therapy is poorly tolerated. So now let's change directions here and let's consider the current epidemiology of hypertension in the United States. Both using the prior definition of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury or higher, that is the definition suggested by the JNC7 committee in 2003, but also by using the new 2017 ACC AHA definition of hypertension as 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury and higher. The new 2017 ACC AHA definition of hypertension has major consequences for hypertension prevalence in the United States. The prevalence of adult hypertension increases from 32%, that is 85 million persons, by the 2003 JNC7 criteria of 140 over 90 or higher, to 47%, 116 million persons by the 2017 ACC AHA criteria of 130 over 80 or higher. Note that regardless of definition, the prevalence of hypertension is highest in Black Americans, intermediate in White and Hispanic Americans, and lowest in Asian Americans. Note also that Hispanic persons of Caribbean origin have a higher prevalence of hypertension than do Mexican Americans. By either hypertension definition, the prevalence increases dramatically with age, such that if we live to age 85 years, 90% or more of us will be hypertensive by either hypertension definition. The prevalence of hypertension, defined as a blood pressure 130 over 80 or higher, is much higher in certain disease states than it is in the general population. Data from the 2017-2018 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey found about a 50% hypertension prevalence in the general adult population, but this is, increases to 61% in obese persons, to 77% in persons with chronic kidney disease with a GFR less than 60 mLs per minute, and to 84% of persons with diabetes mellitus. The prevalence of hypertension in the United States also varies considerably by state. Highest at nearly 40% of adults in the southeastern U.S. and Appalachia, defined as 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury or higher, and lowest at about 25%, in the states of Utah, Colorado, and Minnesota, again defined as 140 over 90 or higher. 2017 data from the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System of the Centers for Disease Control also indicate that hypertension prevalence, here again defined as a blood pressure 140 over 90 or higher, is higher in rural areas than urban areas 
and increases progressively in persons with less education and in persons with lower income. National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey Studies from 2016 and from 2017-2018 have found that only 65% of Americans defined with hypertension, defined as 130 over 80 or higher, are aware of their diagnosis. Only 53% are treated with medication, and only 19% are controlled to below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Only 44% are controlled below the older hypertension goal of 140 over 90. Of even greater concern, awareness, treatment, and control rates for hypertension using a blood pressure threshold of 140 over 90 and higher have actually declined between 2013-2014 and 2017-2018. Things are getting worse. We're going the wrong direction. Control rates among patients treated with antihypertensive medications show similar disturbing trends. Patients treated and controlled below 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury increased from 53% in 1999-2000 to 72% in 2013-2014, but unfortunately dropped to just 65% in 2017-2018, with an absolute 13% lower control rate in blacks than in whites. Note that in 2017-2018, only 39% of hypertensive Americans have their blood pressure controlled below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, the goal set by the 2017 ACC AHA Hypertension Guideline. We have a great deal of work to do. A 2017-2018 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey Analysis found lower hypertension control rates in the following groups. Young patients under age 45 and very elderly patients age 75 and older compared to patients age 45 to 74, but also in black, Hispanic, and Asian American persons as compared to white persons. Also in persons who have no health insurance, in persons who have no usual source of health care or with less than one health care visit in the last year, and in persons with an income less than $20,000 per year. We have many health care disparities in the hypertension setting. Note that while persons with hypertension onset before age 45 years have lower hypertension control rates than older patients, as discussed on the previous slide, Early onset hypertension before age 45 carries a much higher long-term cardiovascular disease risk than does later onset hypertension, as demonstrated in this large prospective cohort study. Compared to persons with no hypertension, cardiovascular disease risks were 2.26-fold higher with onset of hypertension before age 45, but only 1.33-fold higher with hypertension onset age 65 and older. Early onset hypertension carries an underestimated cardiovascular disease risk and is both under-recognized and under-treated.